So now we are going to embark on a journey together for the better understanding of the biological membranes. And this serves as a very important topic that gives us leverage towards the next semester as well when we are going to be studying cell bio. And I'm going to start with a clarification about the diffusion lecture. I know that in the lecture slides, there were a few slides that I didn't cover that included facilitated diffusion, uh, passive diffusion, active transport, uh, fluorescence recovery after photobleaching, et cetera, et cetera. And I am going to cover them. I just want to have a nice uh, chronological order of things. I don't like to jump from topic to topic. So I'm going to cover them uh, within the realm of biological membranes. Function and composition of membranes. What are the lipids that make them? And what are the different phases that the membrane can undertake? Let's start it. So first of all, we're just going to measure the three, three main functions or three main roles the membrane plays. And first of all, as we can, we can pretty much appreciate, uh, it separates space. So we have space separation, space separation between the inter intracellular and extracellular. You think of it between the inside of the cell and the outside of the cell. Also, as you can imagine, <coughs> we will be talking about transport, transport across, across the membrane. And the membrane facilitates, in a way, transport. It has certain, certain ingredients and proteins in it that facilitate transport across it. And also, it has a, a pivotal role a pivotal role in signal, signal transduction. Transduction, signal transduction. And these are the roles that we play. And let's talk a little bit about decomposition. We have three main, um, three main components in the, um, in the um, biological membrane. And when we're talking about the biological membrane, often it is referred to, so I'm going to say biomembrane, I'm going to write I'm going to write right next to it. Often it's referred to as the bilipid, bilipid layer, bilipid layer. So these are interchangeable in the sense that usually when we talk about the biomembrane, sometimes we say the bilipid layer and interchangeably. And in a, in a few uh, in a few minutes we'll learn why. But basically, as you may probably have gathered by now, we have lipids. So we have lipids. We have lipids and we have around 40 to 60 percent lipids in our biomembrane lipid bilayer. We also have quite a few proteins in there. Quite a few proteins. We have roughly 30 to 50, 30 to 50 percent proteins. And we also have carbohydrates. I'm just going to write carbs, carbs here, roughly 10 percent. And when we say roughly, this changes and this varies from different membranes and mem uh, to membranes. But basically, this is what we're investigating. This is what we're going to be uh, looking into. And we're going to keep on trucking and talk a little bit about the lipids. And if, you, if I'm going to go back here, you will see that there is a component of repetition here. I can split this in the middle, and I'm going to get the bilayer, the two layers the two layers. And this molecule here, the molecules that are here, if you just flip them around, you get these molecules. So you can say that each of these layers have an outside and an inside layer. And this is the actual lipid molecule. And if you want to visualize this, I'm drawing this lipid molecule. I have my lipid molecule. And on the other side, I'm going to, to put the other layer through. This is the other side, and this is the biological membrane or the bilayer. Very good. And these these lipids, and what we're saying really membrane lipids, these are phospholipids. These are phospholipids, and we're going to study them at length in chemistry if we already haven't. And what's important to understand with regards to phospholipids is that they are amphiapatic. Amphia, amphi. Hepatic. Hemphiapatic means they have two domains. One of them is polar or hydro, hydrophilic, and one of them is nonpolar, nonpolar or hydro, hydrophobic. Yeah. Let's take a look. We have the head, and this is called, I'm just going to switch colors arbitrarily here. We have the head, and this is the polar head. This is the polar head. 
the hydrophilic head, and we also have the the nonpolar nonpolar tail. And this is essentially just a fatty acid chain, fatty acid chains that we have here. And as we can see, and it is pretty important, we have a double bond here. We have a double bond. If I zoom here, I'll see I'll see this a double bond. And we know from organic chemistry, hopefully you remember, that if we have a double bond, we can have two configurations that are called cis, cis and trans. Cis and trans. And these, these would actually uh, give me a kink here. They'd give me a nice angle here. So if I have double bonds, I would have this little kink here, this little leg-shaped kink. And we're going to touch a little bit about it later. But what you really need to know at this point is that we have two domains. This molecule is amphiopatic. It's got a nonpolar nonpolar tail and a polar head. And when you think about it, this part is the part that faces the inside of the membrane and the outside of the membrane. I'm going to go back to this. Let's go back one more even. These are the polar heads from the, this is the outside of the cell, and these are the polar heads inside the cell, and in the middle we have the tails interacting with one another. So we're going to keep on going, and we're going to buzz past the lipids, and really what you need to know with respect to the lipids is that they're amphipatic, polar domain, a nonpolar domain, they have a double bond, or they may have a double bond in them, and if they have a double bond, it will create a kink here. Let's say this one, this chain does not have a double bond, but this one, this one does, so it have, has a little kink. So this molecule is going to occupy more space because of that kink. Perfect. And we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit about the phases the membrane can take. And by phases, I mean one of two phases. We can have, we can have one of two phases here. <coughs> These can either be the more liquid, the more liquid phase, or the more jealous phase, or the gel phase. And when you think about it, this can this would appear as the liquid phase because it's it's more fluent. You can see that the membrane is more fluent. Or if you try and put a particle, uh, obviously theoretically you try and put something through here, it's going to be easier to put than if you try cramming it here. You can see that the interactions at this side, the interactions are stronger. You have stronger interactions, you have the gel phase. Stronger, stronger interactions, you have the gel phase. And liquid interactions, you have the weaker, or rather liquid, you have the weaker, weaker interactions. And when by interactions, I mean, let's just say that, and we, we will assume, because it is correct, that if this is our polar head, and this is another molecule here, I have these, these chains, these chains, these fatty acid chains, and they have uh, London distribution forces between them, which means they are attracted to one another to a given extent. And if I know that they're attracted, they're attracted to a given extent, there are certain factors that would affect their attraction. And we're going to take one example in which instead of having a kink here, instead of having a double bond here, I'm going to draw this just like this neighboring uh, tail neighboring fatty acid with no kink, no double bonds at all. So I'm going to draw a few of these with no double bonds. And you can imagine that being that these would occupy a smaller space than these ones with a kink in them that looks like it's pushing out, then they are going to have stronger interactions. So the amount of double bonds is going to affect it. So amount of double bonds. Amount of double bonds. We can also think of it as the level of saturation. Level of saturation. And just to, just to give you a heads up about what saturation means, if you forgot, if I have a saturated chain, then I don't have any double bonds in it. And if an unsaturated, that means I have double bonds. So I'm just going to write it here. Saturated means I have double bonds. I have double bonds. So the level of saturation, or how many double bonds do I have, will affect the interactions. And if I have, if I have this tightly packed, no, uh, no double bonds, all saturated, it's going to be a stronger interaction. Very good. What else can affect the interaction itself? Well, if I have longer chains, if I have longer chains here, 
if I have longer chains. And why? If I have longer chains, these chains would have more longer distribution forces between them. And that's kind of important to understand, and it should be very intuitive. The longer, the longer my, and this is really pretty long, but the longer they are, let's just say I put kinks in them just to eliminate that factor. The longer they are, the stronger the London forces between them and the more tightly they are packed. So what is also going to affect, other than the amount of double bonds and the level of saturation, I'm going to have the length, length of fatty acid, fatty acid chains. chains. And this is really the tails, the tails of the of the lipid molecule. And again, when I have, and let me just put it in a more orderly fashion, I'm going to put it in a more orderly fashion. I have uh, the liquid phase. This is it's not how you spell liquid. I have the liquid phase when we have weaker interactions or in, in one of two manners. When we have short, short fatty acid chains, short fatty acid chains, or or when I have uh, a saturation or a, an, unsatur an unsaturated saturated level, or rather, I'm just going to say I'm just going to say double bonds, just to keep it more simple. Just to keep it more simple, double bonds. And if you're in a test and you write double bonds, this is acceptable. This is totally acceptable. It should be acceptable. You should be scored for it. And if we're talking about the gel phase, we're talking about stronger interactions, stronger interactions. And that would either happen when you have long fatty acid, fatty acid chains, or when you have all, all single bonds, or more, let's just say more single bonds, more single bonds. The more single bonds you have, the greater the correlation and the London forces. Perfect. So hopefully you found this helpful, and we're going to use the information we uh, we attained here for for the uh, next few steps. See you in the next video.